Hello guys, and welcome back to another tutorial for M Creator. Before we get started, I want to do a little shout out to a community member. Their name is up on the screen right now. It wouldn't have been possible to make this tutorial if they didn't comment. So I want to thank them uh, really much for actually explaining how to do this in detail. So thanks to them, and let's get into the tutorials. The most requested thing lately is actually a shield, and sure enough, I was able to create that thanks to that particular member, and I was going to show you how to make that today. It's actually really simple to set up, and uh, the model for the shield that I got is actually an item. Now, there is a little bit of difference between the, the actual shield that we have here and a vanilla shield. The difference is the vanilla shield is technically an entity. We're using a item to basically go between a block state and a regular state. So when it's like that, it's basically blocking. So this blocks, it blocks for two seconds. And when it's like this, then it basically is not blocking. I have uh, set up the rotations and the viewpoints and everything like that according to Blockbench. So if you guys want to use this particular model, it's just basically the similar one to the regular regular shield. However, you can customize it however you want and you can add detail at customize the shield however you want with block bench and it would still work. So I'll make sure to provide the actual um, model and textures and stuff like that for you if you want it. Now there is a couple different viewpoints. Now if we are blocking we kind of have it go in front of us. I've designed it that way to make it a little more realistic and when it's off to the side then it, it basically uh, is out of the way for the viewpoint. Uh, we can also hold a sword and we can attack still and we can attack while it's up as well. So that's basically how that's set up. It can be held in the offhand or the main hand, but you can't use it to block. Now that's due to some issues that I was having. It's not quite possible to do it that way with a hand. There's I, I forget what the exact bug was, but there's a problem that I was having to actually make it look proper like a uh, display like the side like that so I just kind of removed that particular feature. Let's give this a test. Uh, there is a couple differences uh, with the different block states. The first block state is when it's not being blocking the player, that blocking damage from the player, then what it's going to do is basically damage, take any damage that's taken to the shield and damage the shield itself rather than the player. And when it's in this particular mode, it will be basically giving the entire entity front and back immunity to any any damage. Hence why I have the two second timer, because if I were to just use a right click event for basically having it so the player was right click to enable it, right click to disable it, then it would be a little bit OP. So I figured setting up a timer would be probably the most uh, best thing for that particular thing. So I have a simple contraption here, just full of arrows. We're gonna give it a quick check, see how it all works. So as you can see, it kind of took damage there. It's um, a little bit now. Of course, it helps if I'm in survival. So game oh, oh, game on survival. All right, so let's just check. All right, we're taking damage. Now let's go like that. Okay, that. So you can see that it basically blocks damage. And you can basically go in front of the arrows. But as soon as that goes down, then you can take damage, right? So we put up our shield again. You can basically walk right up to it until you get shot. So yeah, that's basically how that all works. Uh, it, it does take damage, and from what I can imagine, it will break when it's fully used. So let's hop into M Creator and I'll show you how this all works. So there are only six different elements to this particular system, which is really good. Uh, you will need your texture for your your actual item and a texture for your models as well. So I have two models. Um, the only difference between them is basically the viewpoint. So if we were to go into block bench and then take a look at the viewpoint, then the only difference is between the actual 
view and location that the shield is depending on the block state or item state. So when we're actually viewing the texture when it's not being held, it's off to the side of the player. When it's actually blocking, then it looks like it's being held in the arm in front of the player. And the viewpoint for the when the player is actually looking in for first person, then what it's doing is it's basically the shield when it's blocked, it's in front of the player, and when it's off to the side, it's kind of off to the side to the uh, player. So that's basically the only difference between these two models is once they're a little bit for the difference is the viewpoint for where the entity is actually looking or the where the item is where the player's looking and what it currently displays as for other players as well i have provided the models in here if you guys want to use that and if you want to explore the view settings and stuff like that then i also included the block bench models as well all right so now that we have the two models we have basically assigned the block texture for them and then we also need the block texture for our, uh, what do you call it, the actual items and block version for our texture. So when you have that all set up, uh, you will need one last thing to get this working, and this is a global variable. Now, I tried doing it through MBT for items, and it actually had a bug of itself, which was uh, the, um, it's amazing that I was able to get this far with it, and it does work, which is kind of the point, but uh, with global variables, it will allow the timer to update without basically hiding the shield down. So every time the MBT tag would have been updated, the shield would have kind of been hidden because it was updating the entity itself. So it would basically have that kind of hide animation and that would not really be really good to see really for trying to display the holding blocking animation. So what I ended up doing was just going with a global variable, which is a uh, player lifetime for the scope. And I've just set it to zero by default. It's a number variable and you can name it whatever you want, but that's basically what I gave it, gave it the name. For the items, there is, I've basically just enabled the custom item block model. So you can basically set the shield. This is for the regular shield version. So the one that's not blocking set your item texture. And then these are the settings that I've basically enabled for the shield. Now shields have 336 damage that they can take. So you might want to enable that to that number or depending on how much resistance you want or damage the item to actually be able to take, then you might want to adjust that. And the only trigger for the actual default shield, the one that you craft would be the right click when the player right clicks on the block or air. Now, when they do that, then this procedure right here runs. What we're doing is we're basically getting if the provided item, so the item that we're currently um, running the procedure from, is the item in the offhand of the provided entity. So if it's in the offhand of the player slot or the armor slot, then what we want to do is we're going to store a local variable. So we have a local variable right here, and we're going to store the get damage of the provided entity. So again, the, the damage that the item currently has. After that, we're going to set the item of the main hand to our our blocking state so when the player is basically blocking so the other model and item that we have after that what we're going to do is we're going to set the damage of that item of not the provided item but the item in our offhand now if we were to go with the provided item then what that would do is it would be doing it for the one that we're running the procedure from but now that we've basically replaced the offhand item. It's no longer there. So we have to go with our offhand item selection. And then we're just going to use the vari local variable that we have here, and we're going to set the damage to what we've stored up here. And then what we're going to do is set our timer to 40 ticks. Now this is measured in ticks, not actual time. So there's 20 ticks a second, so this is two seconds. So after that's all set up, then 
what will run next is the actual block state. Now this is run on both when the block, when right clicked on a block and when right clicked on the error. So this is the same procedure. Other than that, uh, we have the other one, which is basically the exact same settings as the model that we had. We just basically updated the blocking shield model and we selected our texture, same settings, same damage, same everything. And then what we've done is for the procedure, what we've gone and done was set a when tool in inventory tick, and then we've basically run this procedure here. So what this procedure does is it gets the time global timer uh, number, so the global variable that we basically set. We're testing if it's zero, and we're also testing if the provided item, which is the item that we're currently running the script from, so the blocked item, and we're testing if it's in the player's offhand. If that's true, then what we're going to do is we're going to do a very similar system to what we did before to get to this state, and that's basically set the block damage to a local variable. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the damage to that of the provided item so the current item and then what we're going to do is set the offhand to the regular state so the state where it's no longer blocking and then what we're going to do is set the damage of the offhand again the the new item that was just added to the offhand slot. And then we're going to set the damage to that to basically the damage that any additional damage that the player has taken when it's been blocked. Uh, if that's not true, if the variable isn't equal to zero, then what we're doing is we're going to actually set a local timer, a uh, local variable called uh, local shield timer. Uh, you can name it whatever you want, but what this is basically doing is it's going to allow us to pass over the the actual value to the global variable there's an error if you basically just do that so I had to pass it to a local variable and then pass the local variable onto the global variable and that seemed to work fine so what we're doing here is we're just lo lowering the number that we basically set so we set it for 40 ticks now every tick this is going to run and it's going to subtract one from the number that is left. So 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, until it reaches zero when this is going to run. So that's basically that part of the script. That's for the items. Now there are two other procedures. There are the when player attack. Now this is where the actual sh blocking part of the shield comes in. Uh, what we're doing here is we're going to test if it, the entity being attacked. So we need to set the global variable to entity attacked. We're going to make sure that the provided entity is either a player or a multiplayer and then what we're going to do is test if the item in the main hand is equal to the blocked item so the shield being that allows us to block damage and then what we're going to do is cancel event that triggered global trigger so basically we're canceling out the uh, entity of being attacked so that can be found under the advanced prop of events tab and then there's a procedure called cancel that trigger that basically this one right here and then you're going to drop that right there and then what you want to do is deal damage to the provided item in the offhand slot and what that will do is it'll deal damage every time the entity is attacked causing one damage point to the block item which will be passed between the two item states depending on uh, if it's blocking or not. Now that's the actual attack script and now there is a little bit extra procedures that I have. I have a player update one as well which allows a little more uh, I would say realistic kind of feeling to the vanilla shield I would say. So what I've done is I've set the player to have a potion effect when the blocked version of the shield is in the offhand. So if they're basically blocking, then on a player update tick, so what we're going to do is basically add the potion effect of slowness, and we're setting this to a level of, I would say, I think zero is one, so zero, one, two, I think level four. 
four is what I have it currently at, and it's it lasts for two ticks. So that's basically enough duration for a, a full cycle of the uh, procedure to procedure to run and a little bit extra. So that's perfect. And that's all there is really to it. Uh, these are the other procedures that for the two items. These are the procedures, the global procedures that we have. So again, I will make sure to include the workspace for you in the description. It will go to the project page. Page and you, from the project page, you can download it from my Google Documents. And uh, yeah, outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.